Our 2v2 update is finally here, so if you want to learn what comps are best for your spec and why double DPS is probably a bad idea, then stay tuned because this one is for you. First, a quick disclaimer, 2v2 is kind of rough right now for about half of the arena population, and as we will be explaining, the meta is dominated by a handful of comps that you are almost guaranteed to encounter every time you queue. When we go through our rankings, you might notice that there are a lot of repeat suggestions for healers. That's because Disc Priest is outperforming the rest of the cast, with Resto Druid trailing closely behind. As we mentioned, double DPS is pretty weak right now, and Disc Priest is the main reason. Their cooldowns are incredibly efficient at denying setups, and their damage is so high that many double DPS teams don't even stand a chance with a good Disc Priest on the enemy team. When you combine that with overall nerfs to self-healing, it is quite difficult to make double DPS work at higher ratings. And as a final disclaimer, when we are including Mistweaver in any of our comps, it is safe to assume we mean Fist Weaving. That being said, the standard healing version of Monk is fairly interchangeable in most comps, but Fist Weaving seems much stronger and more consistent overall. With that said, let's kick things off with our only two S tier comps, which many of you probably saw coming. Despite a minor nerf to Hematoxin, Assassination Rogue is still the standout DPS in the bracket, and Disc Priest continues to be the best healer, making this combination the ultimate meta-defining comp. Disc Priest Rogue is wildly popular in 2v2 right now due to its incredible combined damage output. It is not uncommon for Disc Priest to keep up on damage with their partners, and when that is combined with the best healing reduction in the game, it makes sense that this comp would absolutely dominate. Swapping the Priest for a Resto Druid might put a dent in the comp's overall pressure, but gives Rogues a distinct defensive advantage in longer healing intensive matchups. In any case, if you're wanting to know the absolute best comps in the Season 1 meta, it is without a doubt Acid Disc Priest or Acid Resto Druid. With that said, there is a multitude of high tier comps for other DPS specs, and we will break them down class by class. First up, we have Arms Warrior, which of course is the natural enemy to any assassination rogue. Warriors work well with pretty much any healer, with the exception of Holy Priest since they are pretty ill-suited for the bracket, but more on that later. Even though rogues technically have the advantage in the matchup, any good Arms Warrior will be a huge execution test for assassination, and in a bracket built around healing reduction, the constant pressure of an Arms Warrior continues to carry their performance. Next up, we have a few unholy DK comps that are proven to be quite strong in the meta. DKs aren't the most flashy melee in the bracket, and they tend to shine in longer attrition-based comps, which is one of the reasons they pair so well with Resto Druids. It is possible to play with other, more aggressive healers, like Disc Priests, Evokers, or Resto Shamans, but Druid seems to be the safest overall pick. For the most part, DKs are quite competitive into Assassination Rogues, especially when they are playing Dwarf in order to avoid lethal deathmark damage. Speaking of Dwarf Racial, it is also quite valuable into Feral Druids, who continue to be one of the better DPS in 2v2. Despite a few key nerfs earlier this season, Feral is still performing quite well in the bracket thanks to their incredible consistent damage. With that said, Feral is still a little brother to Assassination Rogue and easily gets bullied in the head-to-head. -head. Outside of this, Feral still has a good matchup spread against the rest of the bracket and is easily one of the best specs. Next up, we have a few Windwalker Monk comps. Just like some of the other melee on this list, Windwalker pretty much works with any healer, but Resto Druid and Fist Weaver are likely the best overall options. As always, Windwalker Monk relies heavily on its elusiveness in some 2v2 matchups, and instead of brawling toe-to-toe -to -toe with other melee, it often needs to play around stun DRs by kiting to avoid as much damage as possible. In a similar position are Demon Hunters, who also need to adopt a hit-and-run playstyle in some matchups. Despite some nerfs throughout the expansion, DH continues to do well in 2v2. The spec continues to have some incredible burst potential with all of its modifiers, and even though it might not be as dominant as it was in previous months, it is still an execution test for many healers. Moving along, we have a different type of Hunter, Beast Mastery and Survival. The two best healers for both of these specs are Disc Priest and Resto Druid. What a surprise, right? With the popularity of Assassination Rogues, having the additional utility of Mending Bandage is still incredibly valuable in the meta, giving a unique edge to Survival Hunter. And just like Clockwork, the Hunter class as a whole continues to do pretty well in 2v2, just not the best. Joining the A tier as the only caster, we have Demonology Warlock. Similar to Unholy DK, games with Demonology Warlocks are usually a bit drawn out, making throughput-based healers an appealing option. Demo's lone success as the only caster in the A tier is a direct result of the fact that it is the only wizard with a reliable MS effect. If any other casters have a shot at consistently making it to the A tier, it seems like having healing reduction is exactly what it's going to take. But rounding out the A tier, we have our leftover rogue comps, including Sub and Outlaw. You might be surprised to see Rogue Mage absent from this list, and, well, that is again because of the popularity of Disc Priest. Just like many double DPS comps, Rogue Mage does best when Resto Druids are the most dominant healer, since typically it means the meta is slower. But now, with most games lasting an average of 2 minutes, even at the highest ratings, and self-healing being much weaker, the game is just too fast for double DPS to do well. 
And with that, we have a complete picture of the high tiers of the 2v2 meta. Clearly, Assassination is a cut above the rest. With the best pressure in the game, it is usually able to end games with relative ease at higher levels of dampening. Below that, we have a slew of A tier comps, almost all of which include other high tier melee. It should become obvious by now that 2v2 is a melee favorite bracket, with the lone exception of Demo Warlock. Just like Solo Shuffle, the ability to do well in 2v2 relies heavily on the ability to apply as much pressure as possible for the longest period of time. This not only includes dealing huge damage, but also how to avoid it while flowcharting defensives. We teach both of these concepts in the class courses over at skillcap.com. There you can learn the ins and outs of your damage rotation and see how to deal rank 1 level DPS while learning how to become a live lord. This is because all of our guides are made alongside some of the best players in the world. And they even upload arena commentaries where they guide you through some of the most difficult matchups and teach you rank 1 level strategies. All of this and more is why you are guaranteed to gain at least 400 rating while using the guides over at our website. So if you want to start your next PvP journey, check out the links below. With our high tiers out of the way, let's go down to the mid and low tiers where you will find mostly caster DPS. Well, with the exception of Rhett Paladin. Hey, it's quite rare when Rhett Paladin can manage anything higher than C tier in 2v2, but with the popularity of Assassination Rogues, Rhett has gained a bit of value in the bracket with its soft counters to death mark damage. With multiple defensive obstacles for Asa Rogues and double DPS comps, Rhett Paladin Disc Priest can be a massive execution test, even after nerfs to Retribution burst earlier this season. Joining Rhett Paladin will be another hybrid, Elemental Shaman. Ironically, Ellie is quite good into most of the melee cast, and it could actually be high tier if it wasn't for those meddling assassination rogues. But in a story as old as time, Elemental gets bullied by the entire rogue class, which is a huge problem since assassination pop up in over 20% of 2v2 lobbies, which gives Ellie a harsh degree of inconsistency. To round out our hybrid trio, we have Shadow Priests. This is an interesting case, since last expansion, Shadow was one of the most pervasive specs in the bracket. Times have definitely changed, and Shadow has definitely lost a bit of steam, especially with double DPS being so weak. Right now, its best options are likely playing with a Resto Druid or a Fist Weaver Monk for some added offensive pressure. Rounding out the DPS in our mid-tier, we have some Mage and Warlock comps. Look, we hate to keep repeating it, but 2v2 is a melee-dominated bracket. Even though both Destro and Affliction have seen pretty significant buffs in recent patches, they are still far behind our high-tier melee. Demo continues to have the spec advantage for Warlock in 2v2, once again due to its MS effect and the fact that it has more reliable lockdown for enemy melee, something which is a huge pain point for other wizards. Speaking of being behind, Enhance was looking pretty bad all expansion until it received some buffs earlier this week. Now, although we don't expect Enhancement to suddenly skyrocket in popularity, we think it is now in a much better state for 2v2. This of course is with the disclaimer that it is probably still one of the weakest melee in the bracket since it still lacks a mortal strike and gets bullied by most of the high tiers. If you haven't seen your spec mentioned so far, it's somewhere in here. The high tiers are relatively well defined. Everyone seems to agree that Asa is the titan of the meta, which makes life fairly difficult for all of our mid and low tiers. Currently, it seems like the 2v2 is least friendly to Boomkins, Devastation Evokers, Fire Mages, and surprise, Enhancement Shamans, with most of these specs having very weak damage mitigation. But with everyone accounted for, we want to hear from you. Are you still playing 2v2? If so, share your experience of the meta in the comments below. Anyway, that wraps it up for this one. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on any future meta changes. And if you want to take your rating to the next level, check out skillcap.com using the links below to learn more about our 400 rating game guarantee. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.